So you got your worn out old factory underbonnet lining or your under hood lining. Now this is out of a 1990 model vehicle. So you can see what's happened here is the material face has given away from the composite and it's actually shrinking and sort of stretched out and bubbled away. It's in an area here where it's about to disintegrate and let go and then everything's gonna fall out. Now this particular one's off an iconic car, an R33 GTR Skyline. Now the customer or the owner, shall I say, is he wants to retain as much factory look as he can. Difficult to go to the dealer to buy one. Whatever sort of car you have, even when you go to the dealer to replace this, you're probably gonna fall over at what the price is and you go, what options are there out? Okay, I can remove this totally out of the car and do a peel and stick. Then you've got the trouble of the edges. To retain that factory look, we're gonna show you how you can reinstate or restore this to create a solid base that we can apply something to it and get something as close to original as we can. So the fibrous top on this, you can't stick anything to it. Being fibrous, you'll try and stick tape to this, it'll, it'll just fluff off. What we're gonna do here is, we're gonna coat it with a polyester resin, which is gonna bleed into it. It's gonna seal into it and create a solid or sealed surface that we can put a peel and stick material direct to the surface. You can see over here, I've actually cut away and relieved the tension on where that, I guess, fibrous material has come unstuck. Reason I'm doing that is if we don't do it in a couple of these areas, you can see over here where it's bridging, it's not gonna have a, a structural face. We can put some chop strand mat. So we've got just some fiberglass chop strand mat here that we can patch repair a couple of areas if we're concerned that structurally it's not there. Otherwise, if we just pour resin into this, two things could happen. One, it could stretch enough and the resin could bleed down and stick to the base material, or it's only a very light layer, we're at risk of, we could put the resin on if you press too hard, you could crack it. So we've got the option to put some glass, feather out some glass areas to give it some structure. So we've got there, that there if we need it. We're not sure if we're gonna use it yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut anywhere where it's bridged, like this area here. I'm just gonna cut the material and let it relax. We'll see what it does. So we've gone ahead and we've, we've cut and relieved these surfaces here. Now, something being a, uh, a bodywork guy, I'm conscious of surface, and I've looked at these, just tried to determine, I guess, what's happening there. Am I upsetting the surface as underneath being distorted that we're gonna have lumps and bumps in it? Now, this is not, I guess, an exterior surface car that we need to worry about, but it's something to be mindful of that we're not gonna put lumps and bumps in it, and it, it's still got a decent, you know, plane on it. The other thing that you want to be mindful of is ideally if you've got the, the bonnet or the hood off the car you can set this in its exact position it is so you're not going to build any tension in it. We don't have that opportunity so what I've got is a couple of packers here and areas that I know that this has got a curve in it I'm trying to keep it in its original form or close enough to. This is still going to have plenty of flexibility it's not going to become something rigid but we don't want to put a twist into it and any fighting clips in that sense. So I've got a bit of timber under here just to keep that curve in it, that it's sort of sitting natural as it would in, be in the car. Now I'm happy with relieving what I've done there. Give that another cut through there. And now I'm going to determine there's a couple of lows here, which I might just put some off cuts of glass strand in there to sort of pack that up. Uh, but as I brush it on, I'm going to determine what's going to happen there. So we've got, a, as I said, a polyester resin. Now we're not using an epoxy. Epoxies do soften in temperature. I mean, your engine bay may only be low hundreds. Maybe if he's got a turbo, you'll notice this area isn't covered in this particular vehicle. Um, it may have a lot of heat there that they'd run a heat shielding. But typically it's not exposed to, you know, 120 is quite hot when you think about it. You think of boiling water at 100 degrees, you burn yourself pretty quick. That It's not extreme temperatures that we're fighting against. Um, vinyl ester resin, so you can just get this from your hardware or your local, uh, if you've got a composite supplier, go there. We're gonna mix this up. All we're gonna do is brush it on, wet out some areas and put some chop strand in, brush that in, let this seal, let it dry overnight. We'll basically de-nib it is the next stage to knock off any highs. And then we've got a solid foundation that we're gonna upholster this and then raw edge it. We'll have that and we'll put that straight back in the car. So we've got our polyester resin mixed up here and we've probably got, I don't know, depending on your temperature, 
30 to 45 minutes sort of gel time on what we've mixed up here. I've got a disposable brush, we're not gonna bother cleaning this out. You just need to be mindful, you know, you're dealing with hazardous or dangerous goods here that you can't just put this in a bin unless it's totally cured, then it goes into general waste, otherwise it's prescribed waste. So don't go pour it down the gutter, giving it to the dolphins. So we coated this up with resin. Now there's only just a couple of patches. I wanna be mindful, I don't wanna to put too much glass on it because it's gonna make it rigid in those areas. So there's just a couple of little bits here that are my concerns. I'm just gonna brush in a bit of chopped strand mat. Just to soak in and make sure that's solid. So with a bit of gloss on it too, you can notice any surface that you're concerned about. You've got the ability now just to relieve cut those just to get that material to sit where it should be so we're pretty happy with this I'm gonna let this flash overnight we'll come back tomorrow and it'll be sealed and we'll go from there so we'll let that cure overnight now there's a couple of little knobs and burrs on here I've just got some 180 grit paper we're just gonna knock those back So we quickly de-nibbed it or knocked off any of those highs. Now there's still a little bit of dust here. You could get an air gun and blow this off. I've just got some aerosol wax and grease remover. I'm just gonna make sure all the dust is gone before we stick it onto the self-adhesive. If you think about it, the dust, we try and stick even masking tape to the dust. The dust is gonna stick to the adhesive and then you're just gonna pull everything off. So it's vital that this is clean. So you can see we've got a nice sealed surface and a good way to test it is get a bit of masking tape, stick it to it. It being a self-adhesive material will stick to this now that it's sealed. We've got our premium underbonnet here, which is a self-adhesive product. You can see it's 100% black. Now this is nice and oversized for our sheet here. Now what I'm gonna do is just flip this over. We've got a white texture here. We're just gonna trace this. I'm gonna leave it oversized, but we're gonna trace it because we're gonna use, we're gonna have to get it out of this way. I want a bit of extra because it's gonna shorten up as we roll through all the valleys. So I'm gonna rough cut it for now. So we've got our sheet here, cut the size. Now it's nice and oversized. What I'm actually gonna do is get yourself a packet of blades. You'll go through them, trust me. I'm just gonna cut just through this plastic and reveal half of it so I can tack it down, work down one side, come back and work down the other. Now to give you an idea on how sticky this stuff is, if I press down on my finger, it doesn't wanna come off. It's designed to stick and it does that pretty good. So I've just lightly just cut through the plastic. Now a tip for you with this plastic, this side silicon coated, can go back and come off. This side's not. If I touch that side on there, it's stuck down for good. So even if you wanna be a bit creative and go like that, you'll know that's the side that's drawn on or if you write top, that's the stick, that's the non-sticky side or the side that's gonna stick and give you trouble. So it looks like I've got plenty of room there. A bit of overhang on both edges. You don't need to worry about air bubbles with this. It's not like a vinyl or anything. This is a pretty easy bonnet hood to do as far as the shape goes, that we can just contour around it. The only thing that's gonna give me trouble is I'm gonna stick past it and I'm gonna stick to the table. That's gonna make life fun. But I'm just gonna chase around it. Reality is you'll use this dome area of one of these more to push it in. And the good thing is too, if I'll show you here, once you've got the backing off this material, you'll get a bit of stretch out of it in all directions. So it means I can get around these lumps and bumps, you know, really well, to the point you'll feel like a motor trimmer without the years of pain or experience. So you can see here how much this has grown. It's fallen right into that valley there where we wanted it to get to with zero wrinkles. So we've been right around the perimeter and you can see we used it, our hands and the butt of this roller and the wheel to 
push it and make sure it had gone into all those, I guess, concave areas, particularly up the front here, or even cut it a little bit to allow it to just get a bit more stretch in the material. You wanna be mindful that you, if I was doing it blindly from the top side, I'll just crush all the back of this. So I was using, you know, the fingers to feel, touch and make sure it's definitely stuck down to the edge. So I'm happy where that is. Now, turn it over, we just have a quick look at it. Now you can see all the original sort of shapes, they're still there. Any of these areas you're still not 100% with. Can push in. A couple of these trim removal pry bars are quite good. They're not sharp, they've got a bit of a dome on them, but you can get right into these harder edges and just massage it around. Even this end with a nice curve on it. I'm quite happy now with this. Get a fresh blade. And I'm just gonna cut around this profile just to make life a bit easier rather than that stick into my hands. I've put that, stuck that bit of waste material back on and now you can see here, I've used the reverse side intentionally, but once it sticks, you don't wanna peel it off. Now I've got something to hold which also gives you the ability to use the scissors. What tends to happen with the scissors, as you can see there, is the adhesive gets on one side and then gunks up the blades. So if we clean them off, now that I've got that on there, we can come back around. You can see the difference in cutting this stuff. I can actually cut it again. So my other option is to attempt to cut it with the scissors, which is gonna be a bit of a balance of both here. So now we've got it cut over, I've turned it over. You can see we've got a couple of ragged edges there. You can go around and just neaten those up. You don't have to be pedantic with this stuff because we're gonna get the heat gun here. And I'll give you a demonstration. There's a little step you can see there. So as I'm working my way around with the heat gun, what I'm doing is just, I'm just rubbing over, smoothing over the edges. So those sort of melted fibers, I can push back into himself and I can also put a radius back on the top here. That'll just help if you've had any scissor cuts or drag lines where your knife's kind of chomp, 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 you've got the ability to smooth it out. So I'm gonna keep chasing this around. And also that extra heat, anywhere where you're concerned your adhesive is lifted, you just give it a squash down at the same time. It means as it cools down, it's gonna hold down there and stay or stretch and relax that glue from its initial contact. We've gone around the perimeter, we're happy with it. You can see I put a glove on halfway through, it did get hot, thanks for noticing. Now, I'm gonna melt over the top here, but any of these fibers are gonna get caught in it. So you can see this couple of specks. So I've just got an air gun, we're just gonna blow all that stuff off. So we've got that clean. Now, anywhere where you've over rubbed this or picked up a little bit of fiber, don't worry about it. Get your heat gun and just go in gentle. And you'll start to see these fibers melt down and put a nice skin on it. Now we've got that all melted down. It looks, it looks awesome actually. They only look this good when they come straight off the tool. And then you put them in your car and they look dirty. Now, we've got our holes here where our factory clips go through. What we're gonna do, hang this over the edge. I'm gonna put a soldering iron. We're gonna melt those holes back through. 